Welcome back to our lecture introduction to quantum optics. Today we want to discuss the so-called balanced homodyne detection and as we'll see it's a very powerful method by which we can detect the quadrature components of the electromagnetic field that we introduced before. And those quadrature components remember allowed us to characterize the different field states in a very efficient way starting from the vacuum state as a state with Gaussian fluctuations to a coherent state as a displaced vacuum state to an amplitude squeezed or a phase squeeze state. And today I want to show you how you can actually measure this and show you some measurement results on that. So let's look at the simple beam splitter. Now that should be a good friend to us with its input and output ports written down in the quantum version. And now we're going to put two photodetectors here, one that measures the photocurrent on detector 3 and one that measures the photocurrent on detector 4. So these photocurrents are going to be proportional to the intensity of the light field hitting those photodetectors and that intensity of the light field is going to be proportional to the relative number operators in ports 3 and ports 4. So for example the number operator in port 3 and 3 hat that's just A3 dagger A3 and the corresponding one in N4 that's just A4 dagger A4. So now of course if we want to calculate the average photocurrent and that's going to be proportional to the expectation value of those operators corresponding to the input states of the light field that we put in on this beam splitter. All right, but now let's take a look, for example, where we calculate N4 for the situation of what we call a balanced beam splitter. So the balanced beam splitter is the situation where we have a 50-50 beam splitter and we write it down in the symmetric form that we introduced before, giving rise to transmission and reflection coefficients in this very simple form. So the transmission coefficient is just 1 over square root 2, reflection coefficient is 1 over square root 2 times i due to the pi by 2, the 90 degree phase shift we pick up upon reflection on a beam splitter. All right, so now let's calculate A4 dagger A4, making use of the input-output relations that we have here. So that's just basically going to be T star times A1 dagger plus R star A2 dagger times T A1 plus R A2 and now we make use of the fact that we're dealing with the symmetric beam splitter so we have one half times the transmission coefficient was just one here taking care of the square root two already in the prefactor here so that's A1 dagger plus sorry it should be minus now minus I times A2 dagger A1 plus I A2. Okay, so now let's just multiply this out and let's write down what we get. So we get one half times A1 dagger A1 minus I A2 dagger A1 plus I uh, A1 dagger a2 and the i i gives us a minus one here plus a2 dagger a2. So that's what we get for n4 and the number operator on the port 3 we can arrive in a likewise fashion so I've written them both down here for you. This is the number operator n4 we just calculated. This is the number operator n3. And now let's take the difference of those number operators. Let's take the difference n3 minus n4. So if we take n3 minus n4, you see that both of these terms cancel and both of these terms cancel. And the only remaining terms that stay are these middle terms here. So this would just be given by then this term that I've written down in this form that will become apparent why I've done it like that in a second. So n3 minus n4 operator is just basically a2 dagger a1 minus a1 dagger a2. So now let's look at the special input state where we input an arbitrary photon state that we want to measure on our port 1 
So this could be, you know, your coherent state, your squeeze state, whatever crazy photon state you could think of. And simultaneously, you put a coherent state on part two. So this coherent state, that's just a classical wave. So we can just take some laser field here. That classical field uh, can be written by a complex coefficient beta with beta being a norm beta, a magnitude of the field times e to the i phi, a phase factor of the field, giving us basically the phasor amplitude of this classical oscillating field that we're putting in on part two. And that can be a really strong field. So ideally we'll see it's good to have a strong kind of coherent state impinging on part two, whereas this state here, that can be a very weak field state. That could be a state with just one photon, one or two photons in it that we want to measure in the experiment. So now our input state thus is a tensor product of this arbitrary photon state on part one and the coherent state on part two. So now in our detectors, which have like photocurrents I3 and I4, let's look what the difference of those photocurrents is gonna be like. The difference of the photocurrents is gonna be proportional to the number of photons detected on detector three minus the number of photons detected on average on port four, because these are proportional to the relative intensities on port three and four. So, uh, but now we can insert the relation of N3 minus N4 that I introduced on the last slide. That was just minus two times one over two I, A2 dagger A1 minus A1 dagger uh, A2. Now, how do these act, these operators act on these uh, input states? Well, A2, remember the coherent state is an eigenstate of its destruction operator. So A2 acting on beta just gives us beta times the same state vector beta, okay? So that was an eigenstate of the destruction operator with eigenvalue beta. And so we can actually write this now in a very compact form. So this would just be minus two times psi one over two i beta star a one minus a1 dagger beta psi. Okay, so now I've already taken out the coherent state being an eigenstate and then beta beta scalar product normalized to one. And now we make use of the relation that this is just norm beta times e to the i phi. So this is just going to give us minus two times psi one over two i times norm beta a one e to the minus i phi minus a one dagger e to the i phi norm psi one. And this operator, remember this operator, that's just the quadrature operator that we call x one phi plus pi over two. That was just the quadrature operator we introduced in one of the previous lectures. So actually you see that now what you get is the final result that the difference of the photocurrents measures is the average value of the quadrature component x for a phase angle phi plus pi over two. And you see that even if this quadrature component is very weak, it's average signal, it's going to be amplified through this very strong amplitude of the coherent state we're putting in on part two. So through interference of the local oscillator, so-called local oscillator field, the coherent state with the arbitrary photon state, we can boost the signal by a factor beta, norm beta, uh, compared to kind of the normal quadrature component. So this leads to an amplification of our signal of, of the quadrature signal. Okay, so now how can you measure, how could you measure a different phase uh, 
of the quadrature component, how could you measure the quadrature operator for different values of phi? Well, the only thing you need to change is you need to change the phase of your laser field here on the input port. So if you have some modulator which can continuously vary that phase, for example, from 0 to 2 pi, you can measure any quadrature component, any expectation value of the quadrature component. And likewise, you can actually show that the fluctuations in the photocurrent tell you something about the fluctuations of the quadrature component. If you can calculate that for yourself, look at the fluctuations of the photocurrent that you would measure how that's related to the fluctuations of the quadrature component operator, and you see that they're directly proportional to each other. So that tells us by looking at this difference of the photocurrents, with a strong coherent state on port 2 of our view splitter and kind of a weak photon state on port 1 that we want to measure, we can measure all the quadrature components of the electromagnetic field hitting kind of that beam splitter. And this is shown here in a beautiful experiment by Jürgen Linex group and Stefan Schiller's group at Konstanz at the time in 1997 where they did exactly that. So they basically took this strong coherent state on the port 2 the arbitrary input state on port 1 and measure the phase space distribution function by measuring kind of the quadrature operators for different phase angles phi. And this is shown here and you can see exactly many of the states we already introduced theoretically. You see here the coherent state as a displaced Gaussian state from the vacuum. So it's just a displaced vacuum state shifted by this phasor alpha of the coherent state. You can see a phase squeeze state which has more fluctuations uh, along the amplitude and less fluctuations along the phase direction. You can see an amplitude squeeze state, for example, where you have reduced fluctuations in the amplitude at the cost of enhanced fluctuations uh, along the phase. And you can even make something like a squeezed vacuum state. So that even the vacuum itself, which had kind of usually isotropic Gaussian fluctuations, you can play around with that uncertainty circle and squeeze it in one direction, squish it in one direction, making it bigger, the uncertainties in the other direction. This is what is here, the squeezed vacuum state. And from these measurements, you can actually also, by looking at the noise of the photocurrent, you can extract the fluctuations and the expectation value of the electric field. And you can indeed see what we kind of introduced before. The electric field uh, of the light field is kind of on average a sinusoidal function, but it has a kind of fluctuations both in phase and in amplitude. The phase squeeze state is something which has very precise zero crossings, so you can measure the phase very precisely. You have reduced fluctuations here at the zero crossings, which allow you to measure the phase of the field precisely at the expense of enhanced amplitude fluctuations. So you have large amplitude fluctuations, but the zero crossings you can actually measure very precisely. Then you have the amplitude squeeze state where you have very small amplitude fluctuations at the expense of large phase fluctuations. Now you cannot determine the zero crossing so well anymore. And this vacuum squeeze state where kind of initially kind of for the isotropic fluctuating state for the isotropic vacuum state, we had kind of all kind of sinusoidal electric fields that would be constant. You see this strange kind of electric field behavior you have for a squeezed vacuum state. We've put down the link here below to the paper. We've also going added a link in the kind of Coursera web pages so you can kind of read the manuscript for yourself. It's a beautiful paper showing kind of the strong application of measuring the quadrature opponents of the light field through balanced homodyne detection. That's all what I wanted to tell you today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next class.